Yasumi Matsuno has been a driving force in the RPG genre for a long time. Ogre Battle, Tactics Ogre, and obviously Final Fantasy Tactics and 12 kind of shot him to stardom, albeit momentarily, as well as Vagrant Story, which was also one of the unsung games that he made. Um, and to be quite honest, I would probably say that Tactics Ogre, Final Fantasy Tactics, and Vagrant Story are his best works. Um, he had a minor involvement with Final Fantasy XIV uh, doing side stories uh, for the game. He did uh, a, a Alliance Raid storyline, Return to Ivelisse, which was a collaboration between his Ivelisse Alliance game uh, kind of series, I guess, uh, which included Vagrant Story, Tactics, and Twelve. And then he eventually did an entire storyline involving the Relic Weapons for Shadowbringers, which is the third expansion for 14. And that storyline was well, well received. For the people that did actually watch it, because a lot of people skipped it due to the monotonous nature of the gameplay during the segments of Bosja, um, the whole thing, dubbed Save the Queen, was actually quite nice. It was a pretty good... Uh, kind of exposition of the empire and the remaining states that uh like city states that are still under attack or under imperial control um as if Entwalker, the latest expansion of ff14 uh we now have gone to garlemald and we've kind of finished off kind of the rest of what's left of the empire but there's still a loose thread with the rest of the story of uh, the save after the save the queen there was a cliffhanger involving the last remaining commanders and leaders of the i forgot the name of the the number of the legion but it's the last Le imperial legion that is in dalmasca which is very important because dalmasca is pretty much the main area the main city area a uh, city state rather um that takes place in Final Fantasy XII. It's where the, your starting place is, everything. It's your homeland, practically. And basically, after Save the Queen, uh, Matano was laid off. The story was over. Uh, there's rumors attesting to, you know, apparently Matano was not laid off, per se. Rather, he was fired. Um, because he wanted to include this storyline in the main scenario quest, uh, which was very hard <laughs> and very unlikely to happen. And I'm not gonna lie, I understand Matsuno's qualms. He kind of wanted his shot in the light um, because of... This is obviously part of this is speculation because it is still rumor, I'm not completely sure um, about the validity of the whole thing of him being fired but it's not completely unbased like it's not um it's not completely like it it, it seems realistic matsuno had like outside of uh, square enix has had little success and kind of is one of those people that kind of hang on due to his legacy and his seniority but due to how big 14 is it's kind of likely as to how and why, you know, they, this his plans would be rejected, especially after Final Fantasy XII, which at this point, it's been what? It came out in 2006. It's been a while. It's been over 10 years, and I'm sure that still sort of left a bad taste in his mouth. As most people that, you know, if they've played Final Fantasy XII. Uh, Final Fantasy XII is an unfinished game. It was changed a lot from its initial story uh, concept, and it was listed that, you know, Matsuno was the original writer, scenario, everything, but the director and the large part of the staff are very different. The only usual people um, being his from the smaller teams that worked on, you know, technical things and not really story based things. Um, and also this composer, Hitoshi Sakamoto, which has been with him for a very long time. Um, and, you know, a lot, a, lot of, a lot of this has been covered by a lot of people already. You know, like the whole, oh, Bosch was supposed to be the main character. You know, there's, there's long periods of just no dialogue, just very, just long drawn out gameplay segments, just missing story. There's just a lot of stuff that isn't there. 
Um, the game is is uh, it's actually kind of hard to believe that a lot of people really like it. I would probably like to say they're it's kind of like <laughs> it's kind of like the game has a lot of potential, but it doesn't live up to what it puts out in the beginning of the game. Um, and I'm sure Matsuno wanted to rectify that. He wanted to kind of fix up and make his own you know, footprint once again. Um, even though 12 was very popular at the time, it, you know, because it was the new Final Fantasy, it was kind of mixed for a lot of people. Some people loved it, some people hate it. And that's, to this day, that's kind of the, the consensus, is that either you love 12, or you understand its, you know, its uh, shortcomings. And some people within that little group either hate it or kind of are indifferent to it. And to be honest, um... As much as I, you know, don't love 12, I would probably say that the references and all the stuff dealing with uh, the Empire was very, you know, like, Matsuno really knows how to write that stuff. He's really good at it. If, if any of you have actually, like, read the field records um, in Bajja and Zadnor, there's actually quite a really nice, like, you know, like, a lot of in-depth, well-thought-out, interesting, either descriptive uh, backstories, and most importantly, um, for some of the more important characters, like Amicija, um, they have, like, an entire, like, interview, like, interrogation report on in, in her profile, and honestly, Matsuno is just, he's just talented. Like, he, he knows how to write this gritty, like, fantasy um, Battleground-esque thing. It, it he did this perfectly in Tactics Ogre and, and ta Final Fantasy Tactics as well. Um, he's also very good at making, just having very interesting um, dialogue in, in general. Like, I would say that his dialogue definitely wasn't as up to par, because of course it had to go through different, a lot of different people in 14, because 14 has such a huge team on it that it's kind of, you know... You kind of have to be at a very top level to really get everything exactly the way you want it, like the main two scenario writers that work on uh, 14's MSQ. But Matsuno's writing did so much shine and show, uh, somewhat proudly in the in 14. But definitely his older games, when he was the head of everything, it definitely, it definitely was a lot more visible. Um, not to mention like. The, the, the teams that he had with him, uh, the cutscene directors for Vagrant Story, and just all the other people that worked alongside him for other games, usually were really on par. But you know, non-voice, even without the voice acting in Bosja, there there was still really interesting moments. Albeit there was also parts that kind of were boring, and I'm sure that's it's because of the world that he set himself in. He usually makes his worlds, he's part of Ivalice, everything's usually a part of Ivalice, and he, in his, you know, like, grand scheme, I guess. But having to fit his world into this one, it uh, kind of makes sense as to why um, he was promptly, you know, laid off for attempting to, you know, take control of, of, of you know, of putting his story into into the main scenario as you know if anyone who plays M uh, 14 knows at this point in the story there is practically no room for any more uh, stuff relating to the empire maybe now after the story has been finished with the Asians, uh maybe right there's a chance we could go back to dalmasca there's a there's a chance that there could be some stuff relating to it but to have it in the main scenario is, it's just not going to work because there's so, there was so much ground to cover in, in, in Walker, a lot. Um, and it was just so completely, it kind of clashes. Like it, it, it's complete, the t storytelling of the two scenario writers of the, uh, of like the expansion of the Shadowbringers and Ann Walker, um, even from then, it's just hard. It, it, it just, just, it just, it just doesn't mesh well. It's very, they're very different. They're very, very different types of storytelling. Um, you know, it's a lot more fantastical. And you know, Matsuno puts magic and demons and different stuff in his fantasy as well. But it's a lot, you know, it, it, it almost feels unholy when they actually do appear. It feels like, it feels like if foreign, like a foreign element, kind of like how it would be in our world if, if that were the case, right? 
Um, it's kind of grounded. And because of that, there's just really no way that it would mesh well, that it would work at all. So because of that, it's kind of disheartening and depressing to see that, you know, he can't really come back and get his time. Hopefully they hire him back for uh, new work after the, exp you know, after this MSQ. We still have a long expansion cycle. We still have five major content patches to come. And we will maybe see something, you know. He could do the trial storyline, which actually probably not because I think that trials and alliance raids are going to be all completely original stuff and I don't know if that has to do with anything with Astians or if it has to do anything with Italy's. Um, but, you know, we'll see. We'll see. There, there, there was the one-off trial of Moria Miseria in um, last expansion, so maybe we can get a one-off trial with the Noah Von Voss, was it? Noah Von Voss, whatever, Gabranth, um, that was in the... That was... Which, honestly, that character has been pretty much, like, dangled in front of our faces for a long time since Stormblood. The, the, the Gabranth successor. Um, or, you know, I don't know if it was his, if it's his son, or if it's, just, if it's another brother. I, I think it's his son. But, yeah, um, or it could be Bosch's son, too. I have no idea. You know, that, that's the thing. There's, like, no info. You know, it's like, you can't, they, they had this, this so little explained. Um, so, honestly, I just wanted to get that out there. Like, kind of open a form. Like, what, 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 um, what do you think would happen? You know, what, what's what's the point of of hearing this, of having like you know of, of having him be removed and you know have him not be able to you know do like what is what is Matsuno gonna do? You know, there's a lot of these uh, older directors and scenario writers that are out here living off of you know like royalties or do, doing a small work some other other place. You know, um, you kind of you know as a person not completely in the Japanese portion of the industry, someone looking as an outsider, looking in as an enthusiast, it's kind of hard to tell what what's happening because they're so low profile and they're so like it, 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 they're so you know I guess it's like covered in, in, in a veil um, that's like semi transparent. You know, it's it's you see what they work on sometimes you, you don't sometimes it's just completely gone like under the radar. Um, so, hopefully Matsuno gets, uh, gets a big break, you know, I, I, I love his work, I love his games, you know, 12, like, he, it's not how he wanted it, and 14, I'm sure he wanted to do more. So, cheers to him, and hopefully he comes out with something new. What do you guys think? You think he's gonna do something else? You think he's gonna come back to 14? Honestly, it, uh... I think 14 is his best bet. I think he's probably going to make... He's probably going to, first of all, make the most money off of that. And second of all, it's probably going to be the best way to channel his energy for Ivelisse. Because I don't think he's going to really get that much of another chance. Unless Square Enix or another company gives him a chance. 